Hi, this is Justin Aquanti, ESA Sales Director, here today with John Badalini, Director of Business Development at Lockheed Martin Energy. John, welcome. Thanks for having me, Justin. John, tell us about Lockheed Martin Energy and what you're doing in energy storage. Yeah, sure thing, Justin. Um, so, so Lockheed Martin has been in energy for quite some time. Um, you know, it started off uh, in the nuclear instrumentation and control world. We've done the uh, we've done that for the Navy nuclear sub uh, fleet for for decades. Uh, that led us to commercial utilities and and actually some early work in in SMR technology. And as far as uh, storage goes, we've done work in a number of areas. Uh, we we've done work in the federal resiliency market. So we have energy storage units at both Redstone Arsenal, and uh, we've got uh, uh, the largest uh, lithium ion battery in, in the DOD at Fort Carson. That's been operating for several years. And uh, additionally, we have over 100 megawatt hours of, of lithium ion storage at uh, a variety of commercial customers. And uh, you know, also we're, we're, uh, we're in the process of commercializing our GridStar flow technology. So this is a long duration flow battery that uh, we acquired the technology in 2014 and have been uh, moving it through our process and testing and uh, we'll be launching that in 2022. John, two part question for you. What role do you see long duration energy storage playing as the grid evolves to include more renewables? And second, what applications and use cases is it best suited for? Yeah, no, thank, thanks for that question, uh, Justin. Uh, there's a couple of crit critical applications here that we see long duration uh, playing a role in. Um, you know, first and foremost, it, it's enabling the hybrid penetration of renewables. You know, as you get beyond uh, 25, 30% renewable penetration, you know, energy storage goes from being a, a nice to have to a have to have, and the duration is getting uh, longer and longer. So that's, that's a very important application. Um, you know, the second application tied to that as well is, is you know, enabling decarbonization, right? As, as the industry moves towards um, uh, away from fossil fuels and more and more renewables, 100% renewables in some cases, you know, again, you have to have, uh, that's going to mean more wind and solar, which is going to need more storage and longer duration storage. And, and the third key area is uh, that of resiliency. Um, you know, that's something you're hearing more and more of uh, as time goes on, you know, whether it's at utilities or critical manufacturing or uh, military bases, you know, these are all industries that are looking uh, at resiliency. You know, how do you provide true resiliency for those facilities? And long duration is uh, a big part of that, right? So you need a lot of energy storage to power critical loads. It's a solution based, uh, you know, um, that, that's needed and uh, long duration will be an important part of that. Um, you know, definitely, you know, within the utility sector, right, there's a lot of uh, interesting applications for long duration storage. We've got uh, time shifting, large time shifting of renewables um, from, from you know, times of peak solar to times of peak load. You've got T&D deferral, um, you know, not having to put up large transmission or new substations, but uh, solving that problem with storage. And uh, the last thing is microgrids, right? Which is, uh, you know, synonymous with uh, resiliency, but, but again, an important application for utilities, the military and critical uh, manufacturing. John, tell us a little bit more about GridStar Flow. How does this technology differ from the other long duration systems? Yeah, sure thing, Justin. Um, so, so Great Star Flow, as I mentioned, is a technology that we've been working on uh, for roughly seven years. And, and that's typically what it takes to get a new battery technology to market that's seven to 10 years. So we're right on track for that. Um, and, and it really starts with the right material, right? Is, is what is your electrolyte based on? And, and that's where the team uh, decided uh, when they first, um, you know, developing the technology was, was right as the right material. So they looked at a lot of uh, materials being used for flow batteries and uh, you know, quickly came to the conclusion that there was a better way to do this. So we came up with an engineered molecule, right? And, and that enables us to, to get uh, the right materials, um, abundant materials, low cost materials, and materials that uh, you know, are, are cost effective, safe, durable and, and have plenty of availability. So, and enables us to tell the properties of the system, you know, to meet the requirements of, of grid application. So, so that was step number one. Um, so that's an area that we have a lot of intellectual property and that's a key enabler for our system. We've also um, 
you know, that's led to improvements in the typical stack configuration, right? So we're able to get uh, advantages in our stack as a result of this type of, of molecule. So, so a lot of engineering and development that went into that. Um, you know, the system, as I mentioned, it, it's, a, it's a very flexible system. So, you, you know, you have the capability to operate um, minimum of six hours, could go to 12 hours or much longer than 12 hours. Um, so the ability to, to size power and energy independently and operate that for long duration uh, of time is, is, is a critical feature. And, you know, the flexibility also comes in where you can use that system to do short duration applications as well. So you get the bulk energy shift, but you also get the ability to do frequency regulation, other ancillary services, switch between those applications, which is important today as markets and policy change is important to have that flexibility in the system. So that, that's a key differentiator for us. Um, you know, the other thing too is this is a, a long life system, you know, flow batteries and our cars in particular, uh, this is a 20 year asset. So when we look at uh, the cost profile and, and how to model that, you know, this is, you, you definitely are looking at a, a TCO total cost of ownership basis. So again, this is a, a long life asset, uh, the ability to do many, many um, applications and revenue streams. So th th those are the key differentiators uh, in our system today. John, you mentioned that Gridstar Flow is in development. Can you give us an update on where you are in that process? Yeah, sure thing, Justin. So, so we've made tremendous progress, um, you know, in the system development and testing over the past several years. So we're on our third generation prototype, which are testing uh, at our new facility in Andover, Mass. Um, and, and this is what we're calling serial number one, right? So this is the production unit that we, we will take to production for our first customers. So we're really happy to get to that point. You know, we've had a very thorough uh, test regime and, and this is typical of Lockheed, uh, you know, to really test their products thoroughly before being introduced to the market. So we've made really good progress. We're on the final stages of our testing here in Q4. Um, you know, we'll then be, you know, um, closing our first deals here in Q1 of next year. And now we've been working with a number of, of early adopter customers. So, you know, that's something we'll be uh, you know, going a lot more public with in the beginning of the year. So, so look for some press announcements in that time frame. So testing's going well, uh, customer interest is increasing. Uh, we've got some really great early adopters uh, lined up. And, uh, you know, you'll be hearing a lot more from us in 2022 and uh, as, as we announce our, our first deals and, and launch from there. John, thanks for joining me here today. Learned a tremendous amount about Lockheed and what you guys are doing in the energy market. Look forward to talking to you at ESA Con 21. Yeah, thanks again, Justin. And, uh, you know, just a couple of key points to summarize. Uh, you know, we're, we're very happy to be part of the show. I'm glad it's back live. Um, you know, uh, we, we see the market definitely moving to long duration, so uh, we're very pleased by that. Um, and we're commercializing our first product here in 2022 and uh, looking to announce our first deals and launch from there. So thanks again and looking forward to seeing everybody um, in December. Uh -huh.